BanjoVinClark.com. I am Banjo Vin, your host here on the website to teach you how to play guitar and mandolin. This week is Banjo Week. This is a fun week. We're doing a bag of licks type lesson. And what we're going to learn today is how to do melodic banjo transitions. Now, what is that? Well, I'm going to tell you all about them. But essentially, we're going to learn how to take the listener's ear from one chord to another in a very creative way using melodic licks. Now, I'm going to show you about eight of these melodic transitions going from G to C and C to G and G to D and D to back to G. But we're also going to talk about how to construct those. What am I looking for? And there's several different methods that I use. And so this has a lot of theory in it, a lot of things that you can take and really put under your arm and carry with you for a while. Okay, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website, banjobenclark.com. You can join as a Gold Pick member, have access to this lesson, hundreds of other lessons. I have well over 100 banjo tabs. Okay, we can also, uh, you can also download the tabs and the MP3 rhythm tracks that I have for this lesson and others. So let's jump right into this bag of licks. Today we're going to learn some uh, melodic banjo transition licks. You may be wondering what in the world are transition licks? Well, that's just what I call licks that help take folks ears from one chord to another. Okay, so you've probably heard these a lot. I know you have with a scrug style. Um, say you were going from the G chord to the C chord, you might hear something like this. Okay. Well, we could also do that melodically. It might sound like this. Okay, so we're just going to present our notes in a melodic fashion, like a mandolin or a, a fiddle or a guitar might do. Now, there is a prerequisite I would uh, highly recommend for this lesson. That's to watch my introduction to melodics here on the site in the basic section that will save you a lot of time and give you a lot of knowledge going into this lesson. Now let's go ahead and throw up the first line of tab there. The first transition that we're going to look at are one measure transitions. We're going to look for at one measure transition from G to C, from C to G, G to D, and D back to G. And we've got four measures on each chord so that this last measure over the G chord, measure four, will transition to the C chord. Okay, then we'll hang on the C chord for four measures and transition back to the G. So measures one through three are just simple backup licks that I might play if somebody was singing or if uh, somebody was taking a solo. It's not very busy. They're just good, solid, rolling backup licks. I've had a lot of questions about what to play at, during those times, and so I thought I'd just include some of that. But measure one, we're gonna start with a quarter note, then slide into that uh, fifth fret with a forward roll. Then we're gonna do some more forward rolls in measure two. Nothing uh, super hard here, but measure three, we're kind of we're going to do kind of a little pre-setup for the melodic lick that happens in measure four. You don't have to do this. This is just one way that I will typically set up for it. And I like to play quarter notes in my backup. Quarter notes are good in the backup. It's good to have this space, especially when you're going to get kind of busy with melodic licks. So measure three, I'm going to have two quarter notes. Then I'm going to do the forward roll. And then that's going to set me up for this melodic lick in measure four that takes us to a C chord that sounds like this. And then we'll land on the C note in measure five. We'll get there in just a second. But I want to talk about measure four. What am I thinking about here? Well, most every time that I'm going from a G to a C chord, I'm thinking about trying to include my dominant seventh tone. You may say, what is that? Well, dominant seven is the flat seventh tone of the uh, scale that you're on. So over the scale of G or over a G chord, that would be an F natural. That's the dominant or flat seventh tone. And, and that tone helps lead people's ears to the four chord. 
Okay, so that's why you play a G7 chord before you go to a C chord. So I'm going to try to work that tone in somehow. And then melodically, I'm going to try to try to get there and lead people's ear to it by taking them on a ride on the scale. If I wasn't worried about playing melodically and I just wanted to play the seventh tone, I might do something like this. Okay, and just playing that chord position, just doing a roll and throwing in my seventh tone. And that takes people's ears there. But now we're going to take them on a ride on this scale. And I just kind of imagine the notes like I might see them on a piano. You may be a piano player, you may not. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to start with a note and then maybe go down a note and back up a note in the scale and then t take them up on the ride to the dominant seventh and then lead them back down to the C note. So the way we're going to do that in measure four, start on this D note. Then I'm going to come down with my thumb, play the B note, D note. And then I'm going to walk up the scale, but we're playing melodically here. The fifth fret, there's an E note, F note, there's that dominant seventh, back to the E. Now we're going back down the scale, D to a G. So let me just play a little slower measures, one through four, and then we're going to play much slower later on. to measure five, bam! We resolve the tension, we take everybody to the C chord just like they were wanting to hear. So now we're going to play uh, three measures of C back up and then in measure eight we're going to give an, a lick, a melodic lick that's going to lead us back down to a G chord. We'll talk about the thinking behind that. But C chord, I'm going to start here with a couple quarter notes. Forward roll, and then this is just something that I'll typically do, measure six with a C chord. I'll open up my first string just offers a little bit of movement. And then measure seven, I'm going to scoot up to my next C position. Okay, um, it's just, it gives me a, um, a different um, perspective on the neck and I've already played a couple measures down here. So I'm gonna slide up. And this also puts me right in shape to play a lot of my melodic licks that happen around the G major scale. Okay, and so I can get up there in the C chord and be ready for it, measure seven. And then what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to pretty much walk straight down the scale here from this G note all the way down to the G note that I'm wanting to land on in measure nine for the G chord. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to start on the F sharp. And I need to have a couple extra notes to fill out the measure. So I'm going to go one note below the G note and then we'll land on the G note measure nine. Let me play five through eight for you. And the, the, the fingering is important there, you know, with our right and left hand, but I like to play those first two notes in measure eight with my first two fingers, and then come down and grab that with my index. As we get to measure nine, let's check out this third lick. Thank you.